Let's take a look at one of the most powerful features of Instana, the context guide. The context guide is a visual representation of application services and their related underlying infrastructure. Behind the scenes, it's driven by Instana's powerful dynamic graph, a core component of Instana in which all the physical components of your infrastructure are tracked and associated with their logical counterparts and automatically kept up to date when changes occur. You can think of the dynamic graph as a model of your application that understands all the physical and logical dependencies of components such as hosts, containers, processes, JVMs, Node.js applications, Python applications, MySQL databases, Cassandra nodes, Elasticsearch nodes, etc. The graph also includes logical components such as traces, applications, services, clusters, and table spaces. Components and their dependencies are automatically discovered by our agent and sensors, which means the graph is kept up to date in real time. So the context guide is the visual representation of the dynamic graph. So let's take a look at how we can visualize and navigate the context guide in the Instana UI. As we just learned, every entity in Instana is modeled in the dynamic graph and visualized through the context guide. So we can really leverage it from anywhere. The context guide is accessed by clicking on either the stack or upstream downstream buttons. You'll find these buttons on entity dashboards throughout the infrastructure area. So as you can see, here they are on a host dashboard and here they are on a JVM dashboard and here they are on a MongoDB dashboard. They are also available throughout the Kubernetes area. So here you can see them on a Kubernetes cluster. And here they are on a Kubernetes node, Kubernetes pod, etc. And they are also available throughout the application area. So here we can see them on an application perspective and a service. Clicking on the stack button allows me to visualize and navigate the physical infrastructure stack responsible for running this cart service. As you can see, the cart service is executed by two different Node.js applications, which are in turn executed by these two processes, which are running within these two containers on these two hosts. For each entity shown, I have key performance indicators helping me understand what's going on without requiring me to drill into each entity's individual dashboard. I can also view the Kubernetes infrastructure for this cart service. I can see the Kubernetes pods, services, deployments, namespaces, nodes, and clusters associated with the service. And again, I've got my key performance indicators to help me understand what each component is doing without requiring me to drill into the Kubernetes dashboards. Clicking on the upstream downstream button allows me to visualize and navigate the logical stack, if you will of the service executions. So I can see, for example, that this cart service is directly called by the shipping and payment services. And that the cart service directly calls the Redis catalog demo and catalog services. And again, as we saw with the stack button, I've got key performance indicators in each case helping me understand what's going on without requiring me to drill into the service dashboards for these individual services. Now, as I said, it's not just about visualization. 
but also about navigation. So I am, you know, still looking at this cart service. I can see, as I just showed, the infrastructure that's running this cart service, but it does allow me to drill from the service, in this case, to the infrastructure in context. So now you can see I've jumped from applications to infrastructure. I am looking at the dashboard for the specific Docker container I chose from the context guide information for the cart service. Once again, I have my stack button. I can see for this infrastructure component, this Docker container, that it's responsible for executing this node application and this node, uh, node server process, and that it's running on this host. I can see the Kubernetes infrastructure associated with this container. Again, the pod, service, deployment, namespace, node, and cluster. And even though I'm on the infrastructure side of the product, I can still see the service that this container is responsible for running. Note that this is an indirect relationship, right? So the container runs the process, the process runs the node app, the node app actually runs the service, but you don't have to drill through all those components to understand that relationship. The context guide shows you the deep relationship here that this container is responsible for running the service even though it's an indirect relationship. We can also, again, even though we're on the infrastructure side of the product, we can still understand the upstream and downstream relationships between the service that this container is running and the service that call that service, shipping and payment, and the services that that service calls in the name of Redis and Catalog. As we've seen before, we can navigate through the uh, context guide. In this case, we jump to the Redis service from the infrastructure for the container that's running the cart service because the cart service calls the Redis service. And again, I can see now the infrastructure responsible for running this Redis service the Kubernetes infrastructure responsible for running this Redis service. And I've got the ability to see all the services that make calls to this Redis service upstream. So again, the stack and upstream downstream buttons are available throughout the infrastructure, Kubernetes and applications area of the product. They allow you to understand the context both through the physical and logical stacks and provide the ability to drill back and forth between each area and context. Give it a try.